So today's restoration is a record 74 auto vice. It is missing its sweet base, but I don't mind about that. And also one half of the pipe jaws. Again, I'm not bothered about pipe jaws. I just love the look of this vice and I've been after one for ages. If you found one that needed um, stripping and, and repainting, with the swivel base and all the pipe jaws intact, you're looking between £75 and £125 before restoration. It's incredible. So let's take this apart and get it stripped down and get the cleaning started. At the back here is a little thread guard to swap all the swarf and stuff going in the thread and getting pulled back through. Just two screws hold this on. The drive screw has the normal spring and washer, but instead of being held by a split pin, this is a dedicated pin that's about a quarter inch longer each side of the um, drive screw bar. Just needs tapping through, a bit of pressure because the spring's pushing the washer. This pair of pliers uh, was for my Rigiox C video. They were as rusty as anything. They cleaned up lovely and I sprayed the handles in rust -Oleum red. quite a lot of fighting against the spring, the spring's very strong and in the end I decided I've got to give up and I stick it in the vise to hold it still. Once it's securely held by the vise it's just a simple case of push the washer with a screwdriver, I hold that in one hand and the same hand hold a tap and hit it with a hammer, just gently tap that all the way through. Now it's time to degrease everything. This is um, grease, oil, everything on it. Don't really want to be contaminating the wire wheels. I'm going to so a splash of degreaser, followed by some hot water. I'm using three water to one degree mix, and a paintbrush just to rub in and clean everything off. Now everything's been degreased, it's time to get it in the other vise and get the wire brush on it. I'm using a knotted wire brush to strip through the paint really quickly. Generally, Record has really strong and tough paint. Stripping the paint off reveals some horrible casting marks, but they will be dealt with later and gotten rid of. These little wire brushes, I think they come in a pack of a pack of three or a pack of five from either Screwfix or Toolstation. 
here in the UK, and it's, they're just a couple of pounds for the whole pack. They're, they're brilliant. They chuck away. You can you can use them probably on about twenty different um, cleanups. They're just great to have. They get in all the small areas that you can't a normal um, wire wheel or the knotted brush on the angle grinder there. I've changed the type of um, wire brush now. Comes in the same pack. This cleans up jaws lovely on vices. Now it's time to deal with that horrible rough casting. This is a, a this is a brand new 60 grit flat disc. That mask, I forget I'm wearing, muffles everything. It's time to get the digs out the top of the vise. and clean up the edges while they're available as well. Okay, now everything's getting a wipe down with white spirit to remove any other residue of grease or oil or muck that, you know, it can come from anywhere on these things prior to spraying. While that's evaporating, move back to the wire wheel and clean up this um, the drive screw thread guard and also we'll be cleaning up the drive screw itself. This comes up so shiny and clean, I'm, I've decided I'm not going to paint this. I'm going to have this left in metal as a contrast to the uh, finished colour. On to cleaning up the Tommy bar now. This is easy, you just rotate it round. I, I personally rotate it round with my left hand while moving it backwards and forwards with the wire wheel.
Again, this comes up lovely and clean, just like it should. Amazing for something that's 60 years old or more. On now to the spraying. I've chosen metallic bronze, my, one of my favourite colours. For those people new to spraying or have trouble with spraying, your very first coat, you just give it a light dust. This dries quite rough and gives your second coat something to stick to and stops running. So I'm using oil rubbed metallic bronze by Rust-Oleum. You can go straight onto the metal with this, it's not a problem. If it was other paint, you'd have to obviously give it an undercoat first. And I'm leaving about five minutes between coats. It will get three or four coats, they're only light coats. Try and spray from as many different angles as possible. Don't forget to come upwards, don't forget to go downwards, spin sound uh, and just get a good coverage in general. It's nothing worse than waiting a day for it to dry and then I missed a bit. So here's the next day now, it's nice and dry. Um, I'm going to have to just cut these off with the cutters because they're stuck in there. And then remove the masking tape and see what we've got. That is actually a, a lovely jaw there. You, you'll see it better on the, the dynamic um, jaw on the sliding side when I pull the tape off. There, you can see that lovely uh, jaw there now on the on the first side, and now on the dynamic side. Now the true colour of the paint really shows up compared to the bare metal. Okay, get this bit of tape off and then it's time to highlight the letters. I've gone for red on this vice. Out of all the ways I've tried, I find these pens easy to highlight letters. They're oil based paint. They last quite a long while. They're about uh, £1.50, $2 a pen. Or you can get a set of 12 for about eight pounds generally it's about two passes with the pen over the letter to get a good coverage i think the red in contrast to this paint fantastic match they go really well together especially on this side where the all vice uh, italic writing is a bit thicker the red stands out fantastically to the oil rubbed bronze Okay, just finishing off this red, then it was going to be to put it all together. Uh, I'm using the Bees Wax Polish as a little bit of grease here. I'm putting this on the end where it's going to pass the body, the, you know, the bit where it's going to rotate in. The spring will also push into from the inside as it's kind of hidden and recessed in that body. Okay, a bit more beeswax, and this will get pushed in as I uh, slide the spring down the drive screw. Sit on the spring and keep that nicely protected. On goes the washer now to hold the spring in place. And if anyone's ever tried this, you're going to laugh. It's just a, a little case of pushing that washer back and inserting that little rod. Easy as pie. When you've got it lined up like that, just give it a tap. In it goes. Sorted. No worries. That took about 10 minutes longer than what you're seeing in this video to get that right. They're a pain in the butt. Anyway, on that to... Um, putting it back together. Okay. 
So I'm going to put the beeswax in there first so that as uh, the threaded rod goes through it turns it all around the thread and spreads it out nicely. And we mustn't forget to put the swarf guard on. See this left in bare metal, yeah, it, it's a lovely match with the oil rubbed metallic bronze. Open and close it a few times, spread the beeswax up and down the, the thread on the drive screw. I've got to hold it with, um, with the other hand. Just retouching up any of the red lettering that needs to be touched up. So, just remind you, here's what it looked like before. And after. So after watching Scoutcraft operate his grandfather's vice, the other one finger, I thought as this is 60 years old, I've got to try this with one finger. And it, it is quite... Not as good as Scoutcrafter's grandfather's vice though. I found that the uh, threaded rod that would go through if it had a swivel is a half inch by 12 TPI so I got a three inch um, half inch 12 TPI bolt went straight through the underneath of the bench through a block of wood and it is fixed to the bench absolutely lovely with just the one bolt so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did I loved doing this vice um, I'm really pleased with the outcome that's all for today Take care. Bye-bye for now.